Hi everyone, and it's week 24 of my no-buy year. Today we're going to go and declutter my makeup collection, but I wanted to start off in my cozy corner of conscious consumerism because I have a little disclaimer, and it is as follows. You will be seeing products in this video. I will be showcasing all of the makeup that I have and use or don't use and might declutter, and I'll be going through each item and maybe doing a little spiel about it. I might be talking about products that I really like. I might be talking about products that I don't like. I haven't started yet, so I'm filming this prior to doing the actual process. But the disclaimer here is I will be showing you products there will be things that you might want to buy coming in front of your eyeballs, and if you're sensitive to beauty and trying not to buy beauty products, maybe you don't want to watch this video, and maybe you want to stay tuned for the next one. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Let's get into the bathroom where I keep all of my makeup and gather it all up to be taken downstairs to declutter. All right, so as you can see, we're in, in the bathroom now. My counter is a mess. We're gonna do a flat surfaces declutter after this at some point, so in a couple of weeks you might see that. But we're just gonna start with my makeup. All of my makeup is either on the counter here in this little glass, this little kind of cup, where I keep my everyday like eye makeup, or it is in this drawer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all in here to take it to evaluate for decluttering. And we'll go ahead and put skincare products in here as well. Let me just check this drawer in case there's any lingering products. I did find a mask, I guess that's skincare. And then I have one last place where I have some random items. And that is in my everyday purse. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the makeup out of here. Okay, so does anyone wanna guess how many lip products I had in my purse? I had all of these eight lip products and this little mascara in my purse. Eight lip products. I think what happens is I take the product that I'm wearing that day and shove it in my bag and it just never makes it back to my makeup drawer. Okay, including skincare, I actually ended up with more than I thought I would, so let's go ahead to my table where I can start the decluttering process. Hello. So this is a new location and a new <laughs> angle and new activity for me, so bear with me for any technical difficulties. But I brought all of my makeup, skincare, um, just general beauty products down to my dining table and I'm going to sort them and possibly declutter them. So let's start by getting them into categories. This is actually a lot more than I thought I would have. Um, let's get to sorting. Okay, I believe we have everything laid out now. Um, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. I honestly have a lot more makeup than I thought, so that was a good lesson. I guess I'm going to go through everything. A little bit about why I bought it in the first place. If I use it today, maybe I'll do a little bit of swatching. Hopefully we find some stuff that I'm going to let go of here as well. Let's start on the side of the cleansers and moisturizers because I don't think I'm going to declutter any of these. Rather, it'll be stuff to use up, stuff I may or may not repurchase. So starting over here, we have the Skin Fix Foaming Oil Cleanser. 
I have not opened this yet. I am going to try it after what I'm currently using runs out. I'm currently using the Honest cleanser and I have no issues with it. It's a foaming gel cleanser. I like it. I might repurchase it if I don't like this better. So these essentially fulfill the same purpose. I will just use these up. This is a detox mud mask also from the brand Honest. I don't use this very often so this needs to go in a pile of actively need to use products. Now these two products serve as my makeup removing cleanser options. I'm using this up first. This is the Pharmacy Green Clean. And then this is the Paula's Choice Omega Complex Cleansing Balm. I just purchased this so that I would have a makeup remover for when this ran out because I thought I would use it up faster than I have. I still have quite a bit left even though this is just a mini size because I don't use a lot at a time and I also don't wear makeup every day. I don't like the pharmacy enough to repurchase it. It feels a little bit greasy and it kind of feels like it leaves a film on my eyeballs after I use it. I can't see totally clearly, so that doesn't feel great. I hope that this one does not do that. I've never tried this before. I was using Lush Ultra Bland before I tried either one of these. Daily Moisturizer is the Honest Hydrogel. I have a mini of the Skin Fix here as well that I was interested in trying after this runs out or after the mini on my nightstand runs out. I forgot to bring that one, but it was a mini youth to the people. It came with the Sephora birthday gift along with this and a tear open packet of some other kind of sample that I've already used up. So that's what I'm using on my nightstand to moisturize at night currently, and it's almost gone. So I will almost switch to this on my nightstand. And then I still have quite a lot of this to use up for just everyday facial moisturizer. This was a TikTok influence purchase. It's the snail mucin. I honestly kind of find the idea half gross and half intriguing of putting snail gel on my face. Um, if it has all the benefits it says on the tin or you know does what it says it does, I guess it's not gross. I mean, it is a natural product, but I really didn't need this uh, influencer finger taps. I really didn't need this. I will not repurchase it. It seems like an unnecessary step in my skincare routine, but now that I have it, I will just use it up. Vitamin C serum. This is just a cheap brand off of Amazon. I might switch to the Naturium serum after I use this up just because I can get that in store at a Target and I would prefer not to order on Amazon ever again. This is just a sample that I got from SkinCeuticals blemish and age defense salicylic acid. I won't repurchase this, but I do want to use this up. So I'm gonna put this in the pile with the mud mask of things that I actively want to use up. This is just a mini of the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Collagen Activating Serum. I haven't tried this before. It just came with the mini of the moisturizer and the cleanser and those two products I wanted to try and this just came with. This is something I saw on one of those Amazon must have lists. It's a stick. One of my kids got to the top so it's got that divot in it, but it still works. It does feel nice and cooling under the eyes. It's soothing and it's enjoyable to use. Not sure if it actually has any benefits, but <laughs> since I'm not getting enough sleep these days, it does feel nice at least. I'll continue to use it and use it until it's gone. This is the trio of my face base options. I'm not a foundation girl, so I was using this Maybelline BB Fresh for several years, and then I thought maybe I should upgrade. I'm in my 30s now. Should I really be using something from Maybelline? Um, but <laughs> you know what? It might actually be my preferred option out of these three. This one's empty now, so I'm gonna throw this away. It's maybe my first declutter of this video. So <laughs> decluttered in the trash because the tube is empty. But I replaced it with the Tower 26 and then also the SkinCeuticals, which I have opened both of these because the Tower 26 I found to be very makeup-y. On me, it feels like a foundation. It's almost, I don't wanna say cakey, but I can tell that I'm wearing something on my face. It has a nice finish, but it's like more of a makeup finish. So on the days that I have a concert or sometimes on days when I'm filming videos, this is what I'll use because it makes me feel finished and like I have something on my skin. And this is much thinner. It's like almost watery. In fact, I'll show you just because I didn't know this before I bought it. Look at that. It's like dripping out of the applicator already. And I got it because it's a broad spectrum sunscreen, right? It's SPF 50 and it's tinted. So I thought this would be a good solution for my face. And I have yet to determine, you know, see how watery that is? I have yet to decide whether this is better than this for me on my face. And obviously I will only repurchase the one that I actually am going to use going forward. So I will use this up first and then I'll make a decision. Obviously this one is much, much cheaper 
but I also am interested in the cleanliness of the ingredients and stuff like that. So if anybody has any info about that, please comment down below about, you know, clean tinted SPF moisturizing kind of products. Now we have my other kind of skin concealing foundation type products, the Merit foundation stick, which is just an all, all purpose kind of thing concealer foundation and this is again something I saw hyped up on social media is about like the best drugstore concealers unfortunately one of my kids got to the top so the applicator is broken but I will try to continue to use this up and will not repurchase it because I just found I didn't need it when I had this already this is just a pencil sharpener now this was a stupid purchase I have seen other influencers makeup people use setting spray and I was like ooh, that sounds intriguing maybe that'll feel nice on my face in fact, uh, maybe it feels nice, but it also kind of feels like I'm a cat who's being sprayed in the face with water after jumping up on the counter. Like I kind of almost feel stupid using this. So I will not repurchase it. I don't even know if I want to use it up or if I'm just going to let go of it. But for now, I'll put it in the pile of things I actively want to use up just because I don't want to be wasteful but I do not find a benefit in using setting spray and I will not be repurchasing a setting spray. I think actually what happened was I saw the viral Charlotte Tilbury setting spray and I was like, oh, I've never tried setting spray. Let me try the knockoff Sephora version just to see. And at least I didn't end up spending more money than I needed to. This was another Hannah Louise post and influence purchase. I'm kind of okay with it because I don't have anything similar to this for my hair. I don't even have hairspray. So if I want something to put down the flyaways onto the top of my head when I do a ponytail or style I want to be neater with. This is an okay product. I probably didn't need to buy such an expensive hair gel type product, but now that I have it, I'll try to use it up and hopefully it won't technically expire. It's got the 12 month sticker on it, so I know I won't finish it within 12 months of purchase, but hopefully I can get a lot of use out of it while I have it. I'll probably be keeping it after it's technically expired. Now we get to my everyday makeup. I keep it in this cup on my bathroom counter. You might think that I don't have anything to declutter in the products that I use every day, but you would probably be wrong. This is just a pair of tweezers that I keep in here for convenience. This is a sample of the Marc Jacobs Daisy, which is preventing me from buying the whole thing. I'm actually not a perfume or body spray person at all anymore. I could probably let go of this, but for now it fits in the cup and for insurance purposes, not buying any more perfumes, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. These are my eyeliner type products. I have two NYX eyeliners, one in brown, one in purple. The brown is a little bit smeary. I don't use it that often. I tend to go for the purple or for my YSL black eyeliner. That's what the sharpener is for. These are all just fine. I don't have any problems with them. These two are retractable, so they're a little bit easier than the pencil that you have to sharpen, but no complaints really. This was more recent. I just saw again on TikTok people using white eyeliner to make their eyes pop and make them not look so tired, and I fell into the trap. So I was looking at the, uh, the Makeup Forever. I almost got the white one of this, but it's like twice the price, I think, of this one by Maybelline, possibly even more than that. I don't know the prices off the top of my head. So I settled for the cheaper one, and it's a good thing I did because I don't use it that often, but I do use it occasionally, and I will keep it in my everyday makeup. This is my go-to liquid liner. It's just the Physician's Formula. I actually have a backup of this already. Probably should get rid of this one as far as the how long it's supposedly good for dates, but it's still writing, it's still working, and I haven't gotten irritation from using it, so I'm gonna keep on using it until it really dries out, or maybe until the end of the year. Is that a reasonable timeline? Mascara is the only other product that I have. Actually, that's not true. I have a backup brow product too, but mascara is one of the other products I have a backup of already before this one's technically done, but they're only supposed to be good for three months, I think. So I just didn't want to run out and not have any since mascara is like one of the few products I don't want to not have. Mascara and then liquid eyeliner are like my two, if I wear nothing else on my face, it'll be these two. So I had the Lancome Lash Idole, and I still really like this. I might repurchase it if I don't like the Ilia Limitless Lash better. But I, I have tried a mini of this before, and this also works for me. So I might just alternate between these. We'll just wait and see after trying this one. Now these are eyeshadow sticks. They're like a crayon by e.l.f. No budge shadow stick. This one's in the color Magnetic Pull and Rose Gold. So this is like a taupey gray. 
Maybe I should do it on my arm here. There you go. And this is the rose gold. So nothing objectively wrong with these. In fact, I think they're actually very pretty colors. But the last time I wore this one, I got little pimples on my eyelid, like irritation. So I think both of these have expired beyond their usability and they will both be decluttered in the trash. This is my Anastasia Brow Wiz pencil, medium brown. It's like the thicker one, I think. I think I still have a good portion of this left. I don't know how much initially comes in there, but that's how much I have left. It's probably gonna last until the end of the year because I'm not an everyday makeup wearer. So I will just use this until it's gone. And I do have a backup in dark brown, so the darker color. In fact, can I compare how much comes in a new one? Is that wise or am I just gonna snap this off? Oh, wow. Okay, so that's new versus used for how much comes in the product. So I guess I have used this product at least a little bit. <laughs> now to get this back in here without breaking it. This is the Merit Brow Gel. I do like it, but I don't think I'll repurchase it because I have this clear Anastasia Brow Gel that just came with the backup pencil. So that can go in my backups. And then I was also influenced to get this off of Amazon just because somebody was talking about how it's such a cheap, good eyebrow gel product. It comes with a couple of little brushes that I have misplaced already, so that's great. And then I guess you just rub the brush on here and then put it in your brows. I don't know when I'll get to this because I don't know when this and the Anastasia will run out. So this was definitely a mistake, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my backups anyway. Hashtag influenced. Okay, this mascara is just a mini. I think it was a sample from Sephora or like one of the rewards things. Um, it's fine, I wouldn't repurchase it, but it's the one that lives in my purse for if I need more mascara when I'm out and about. Oh, look at this lip product sneaking in up there. All right, so let's tackle these next. These are my Summer Fridays and Road lip kind of gloss products. So these ones are colored. I do have the similar color to this of the Road somewhere as well. I think it's in a handbag though, like one that's not my everyday bag. So I didn't bring it down for this. I'll continue to use all these until they're used up because I really like these two products. In fact, I think these are my preferred lip products over all of these. So these are definite keepers. Um, one of these is my nightly lip treatment so that my lips don't feel dry overnight. So that's the clear ones. And then these ones are tinted. And one of these lives in my everyday handbag. The road I find a little bit glossier. So that's nice when I want that really liquid lip look. And then these are just a little bit stronger colors of the Summer Fridays. I know these are super hyped products on TikTok and Instagram, social medias in general. And that's why I bought them initially. But in my case, it did actually pay off because I'm more of a light makeup person. So these fit my everyday look a lot better than any other lip product. So while these will not be repurchased in the majority of these, these will be once I use them up and perhaps once I get through some of these as well. All right, this is gonna go back on my makeup counter. All right, this is an inferior product to the tubes of lip gloss. This one's kind of a lip balm. Um, <laughs> I am also following along with Hannah Louise Poston's tinted lip balm journey. And I tried this drugstore version and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a decent amount of product in there, which is unfortunate because now I want to just use it up and be done with it. So I will not be repurchasing this or any other tinted lip balm type product because I know I like those glosses in the tube a little more. Too Faced Lip Injection. This is a fun product just because it makes me feel like I'm wearing makeup <laughs> and trying to do something to make myself look prettier. Um, this is the one that burns. I don't know if that's something I'm a fan of or not, but again, I have no reason to throw it away. I will put this in the pile of things to actively use. And I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. If I haven't made a serious dent in the pile of products to actively use in the next three months, I will declutter them. How about that? Does that sound reasonable? And again, the Tinted Lip Balm Saga brought me to these. Um, I actually purchased this on Mercari because I am addicted to resale apps, selling on them and buying on them. Or I have been addicted to them, not this year in my no buy, um, not so much anyway. And this is the Laguna Afterglow Lip Balm is what this is called. It came with the mini of the bronzer, which is somewhere out here, right here. 
So these came as a, as a little set and there's nothing wrong with them. I don't mind this when I put it on. So again, I think this will go in my pile of things to use up. It's a mini, so maybe I'll have a chance to make a dent in that and see if it's worth keeping past the next three month mark. Same here. This is my really only bronzer product that's not sparkly. So I have this one and it's got some shimmer in it. Uh, I think this is a Milani bronzer glow. It says 24 months on the tin. This is another one I've had for multiple moves and I haven't used it. So you know what? This might also be let go of. Let me see if I can. Wow, it's very orange. You see that on this finger here? And I don't even know if it's transferring as I swatch it to my arm because it's so old. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit to getting rid of this. Okay, back to the tinted lip products. This was in my bag as well. It is a NARS lip balm. It's a tinted lip balm, I think. It's not the afterglow, it's not the shiny one. This one's okay. Um, I also need to probably just use this up. I'm gonna put this in my use it up pile. It's in the same category of product as this drugstore one, just a tinted lip balm. I'm not such a fan, so won't repurchase. So let's go through the other face products next. I have this Merit kind of shimmery stick in the color Bounce. Let's see if I can get a swatch of that. It's right there, if you can tell. Shimmery. It's quite pretty in the sun, in the natural light. So I will keep that. This YSL kind of bronzer, illuminator stick, stick highlighter. I'll try to put that one on too. It's a little bit darker right there. And again, I have no reason to get rid of it and I do occasionally use both of these products when I want a little bit of shimmer on the cheeks. Sorry, this is probably the worst swatching video you've ever seen, but I did say I was not a beauty guru, so. These two products by Lila B were another influence purchase from the YouTuber Dearly Bethany. And they're fine. Um, the packaging has a nice weight to them. It's like they're kind of porcelain. <laughs> Influencer tapping. And you know, they're kind of luxurious feeling. This is a blush. Let's see if I have any fingers left to swatch that for you. Right there. And it blends out obviously, so it's not crazy. And then these eyeshadows, I'll just do the darkest one. They don't have the greatest color payoff, but they're fine, they work okay. And they're you know pretty neutral, neutral colors. So it's a good option for a palette to have, but I'll come back to the eyeshadow palettes in a bit. I have no reason to get rid of the blush, so I will keep it even if I don't use it very often, just because this one is so much easier to use. This is one of the Merit blushes in the color Fox. I'll try to put it right here by the other blush. <laughs> it actually looks pretty similar. So there's the Merit, there's the Lila B. And then finally for the pink option, pink and shimmery, I have classic NARS. We all know what this shade is called, even if I don't feel like saying it online. And I've had this one for years too, but it's a powder, so I feel okay about keeping it. This was a sample of the Laura Mercier setting powder. I just keep it for those days that I have some more blemishes and have a concert, just so I have a powder option. And then this is also a powder. Honestly, it feels kind of dried out, but Yeah, okay, it does still work. It still is doing something. So I will keep this. And it just keeps me covered for products in that category so I don't go looking and wanting to buy something. <laughs> this is just the brush that came with the Merit um, foundation stick. I just use it for everything. Call it sacrilegious. I, I use it for the blush, for the powder, for the Merit stick if I need to blend it in. Although I usually use my fingers for that, to be honest. So not a beauty guru. All right, now by far I have the most of these lip products and I use these the least. So yeah, <laughs> work needs to be done here. Maybe let me do these by type of product. All right, so we'll do it like that. All of these kind of gloss type products. I feel like the Summer Fridays or the Tinted Road Balm does the job. There's only, I think, one of these that I would repurchase or maybe two if I'm being generous and it is this one by Say, if that's how you say the brand. And the color is Push. It's like a dark brown in the tube. 
swatches like that as a dark brown. And again, like, it's very similar to the dark tinted Summer Fridays. In fact, let's see how similar it is. So, you know, it's just a little bit of a brown glossy thing in a tube. So they're similar enough that I don't know that I need both. But I do like the texture of these two lip glosses. I do think they're kind of bouncy for <laughs> lack of a better word. This is the Glossy Bounce by Say. That's, so it's, you know, it claims to be bouncy, but they have kind of that texture on the lips where there's, it feels like, I don't know, bouncy is the only word I have for it. And I like that. I like that it's also different than the feeling of those other products. So, you know, it feels like it doesn't just disappear as soon as you put them on. Um, this one I got in one of those packs from Sephora of like trending lip products. It's Rare Beauty, the color Nearly Neutral. I do like these two. So, these will be in the place of elevation as far as if I do repurchase glossy products, it will be one of these. Meanwhile, all of these need to be used up and not repurchased. So these are the Merit Lip Oil in Taupe. Again, Hannah Louise posts and raves about the Merit lipsticks and lip oils, and I wanted to try one, so here we are. It's not groundbreaking. I don't really like lip oils because it kind of feels like they disappear. Like they don't really feel moisturizing and I don't feel like they last very long. So it's gonna go in the use it up pile and maybe in three months it'll be gone. This is the NARS lip gloss in the same shade as the iconic blush that I don't wanna say online. It's just a pink. I never wear this. It was in my purse, but I don't even know if I need to keep this one because will I ever wear it? And I don't even know how old it is. I kind of shudder to think how old it might be. So I think it's actually gonna go. This is a Lisa Eldridge that looks remarkably similar in color to the Merit. Maybe it's a little bit pinker and lighter, but to me, they're pretty much the same. It's in the shade of Fair. I guess the NYX one is almost the same as far as dimensions. And this is the Fat Lip Oil. I think this was advertised on TikTok by various influencers as a great dupe for the more expensive lip oils, maybe the Dior or whatever, which I don't have. Luckily, I didn't fall into that trap. But again, both of these just need to be used up and not repurchased. Okay, now getting into the lipsticks. We have two shades by Merit. This is 1990. And L'Avenue. So I find these helpful. That's L'Avenue, that's 1990. I find these helpful because they're not super saturated. And I can get away with the darker colors in a classical concert setting without looking too vampy using these. So I will keep these and continue to use them. I don't know if I'll repurchase. I don't know that I've ever repurchased a lipstick, to be honest, because I've never used one up. But I will just continue to use these and get <laughs> my wear out of them. Now we come to another influencer purchase. So this is Sophia Nygaard's ColourPop collaboration. I have never worn these out. It came as a set of six and I already decluttered two of the shades because I determined that I wasn't going to wear them. And I kept these four just because I thought they had practical value. Here's kind of the shade tops. They're called Screamer, Fred, Brucey, and Bury Me in Lipsticks. And I really just bought these to support an influencer that I liked at the time, Sophia Nygaard, and I don't not like lipsticks, so it seemed like a good purchase. Um, there was a time in my life that I was much more experimental with lipstick color. I had a purple, I had an orange. Now I'm kind of moving away from that, and I have a feeling that these probably need to go. So this is Screamer. Wow, that's a very dark purple. This is Brucey, which is a green. It almost kind of looks black. This is Fred, which is a red. And I'm gonna put it over here so I can compare it to my other red products. And this is a berry. Bury me in lipsticks. So there's bury me in lipsticks, there's Fred. And when I look at the swatches, I think I, on one hand, don't have a reason to declutter them. I have space for them. And what if someday I do need a very, very dark purpley red or a green lipstick and I'll regret getting rid of these. 
I just don't know. I think I need to see if I can use them and wear them and that might make the decision for me because sometimes you know when you put on a lipstick you're not sure about and you immediately know that you're never going to wear it again. I think I need to have that moment with these. I need to force myself to wear them over the next three months and maybe I'll know the first time I put it on. I'm never going to wear this again or maybe I'll wear it a couple of times and it'll grow on me. <sighs> this pillow talk by Charlotte Tilbury. It's just one of those hyped products, right? It's a cult classic, cult favorite beauty product, and it just doesn't work for me. For whatever reason, I feel like I look like a clown when I put this on. It's supposed to be like the My Lips But Better that works for everybody, but for whatever reason, on my face, it just doesn't work for me. I think it's too peachy. And I just need to not be, I mean, it's a beautiful, Lipstick, the tube is beautiful, the bullet shape is refined. I like how it has these little dips at the sides, but it's just not something that I ever reach for or use. And I hate to waste it, but if I'm not gonna use it, why clutter up the rest of my options with this lipstick? This YSL is a similar kind of thing where I just don't know if it's the right color. It's a very pink, I'll put it right here by the Pillow Talk, very pink kind of peachy shade and I just don't know if I like the way it looks. In fact, let me put it on. What do we think? What it does have going for it is that the formula feels really nice. It is also another beautiful tube. It's the designer aesthetic quality. So I think this might go into the have to use it column and see how I feel. This is the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Cinnabar. I love this color. It's my ideal rusty red. I had a color that was very similar. I think it was Rimmel 110, and I think it was discontinued. So I'm happy to have kind of a designer dupe for my drugstore favorite rusty red shade. This is Nar Stefania. It's a hot pink, and it was a dupe for my L'Oreal hot pink that I've had for over a decade that I decluttered just because it was too old. Um, this one is a little bit cooler toned, which you would think would be better for me, or I would think, but for some reason, I don't know if I love it as much as I love the original. I will keep it and try to wear it. Perhaps I'll put it in my needs to be worn. <sighs> Another Hannah Louise Post and Influence purchase. This is a Gucci lipstick. Anybody remember when she was talking about those Gucci lipsticks? The tube has a wonderful weight in the hand. It does feel very nice and looks very nice. It's the shiny gold for the magpies among us. This is in the shade Louisa Red, and it was supposed to be a dupe for my other Rimmel favorite shade, 107, back from the Zoella days. Anyone remember that? I was influenced by Rimmel 107, but it is a very nice berry red. In fact, I'm gonna put it over here by the Sophia Nygaard berry, just to see how close it is. Oh, it's not that close actually. This one's darker. Maybe I'll put it over here by the Fred. That's more similar. I mean, this Louisa Red is still darker, but the Fred Red is much more in the same ballpark than the Berry over here. Now, I have a problem with this Gucci lipstick. It bleeds on my lips, and I'm not a lip liner girl. I have a few lip liners here, but they're all of the nude variety because of the trend over the summer, last summer, I think, or last fall, I don't know. Um, whenever nude lips were trending and people were sharing their lip combos on TikTok especially, I fell into that trap and bought some nude lip liners. I had the NYX one before. I've had this one for a very long time actually um, and never use it. In fact, this can just go. It's called Truffle, Nude Truffle. I think one of the OG British influencers was talking about this too. But it's so dry, this product, that it like really hurts when I use it on my lips and I just don't think it needs to be in my collection. Um, this one I haven't opened. This is Wherever Walnut. Again, an influence purchase off TikTok. And I don't know if I should open it because maybe somebody could get use out of it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the color Love Trap. And it's again, kind of similar, similar enough to the NYX. This is the Charlotte, Charlotte Tilbury. This is the NYX. But I feel like I can get rid of this one and just use this whenever, whenever I'd use that kind of lip liner. And this, out of the lip liners that I do have, is my favorite. 
but I do still kind of feel clown-like when my upper lip is defined. I don't have the most defined upper lip, and so when it is defined, I feel like I'm wearing makeup, if that makes sense. And that's when the glossy products that I've put over here, uh, that's why those are my favorite, I think, and why these lipsticks are less worn. But this Gucci one, to get back to the matter at hand, on my lips, it goes out of the lines, and then by the halfway point of the evening that I wear this, I feel messy like a clown where the makeup is outside my lip line. So the tube is beautiful, but what can one do with an old lipstick tube? Does anybody know? Comment down below if you have any ideas to repurpose this beautiful piece of metal. Okay, so I will be keeping this Charlotte Tilbury lip liner just so I don't fall into the trap of buying any more because I already have one. It remains to be seen about wherever walnut I'm gonna to try to wear the Charlotte Tilbury before making a decision on this backup product. In fact, I'm gonna move the Charlotte Tilbury to the must-wear category. These MAC lipsticks. These are probably the oldest lipsticks in my collection. This glaze in the shade Hue. This pink satin, pink nouveau. These are both possibly almost a decade old as well. This was another Zoella influence. She talked about how she thought this looked good on everybody. And then this is just a Barbie pink. Um, I'll do a quick swatch of these since I've got them out. So there's Hue. There's the Pink Nouveau. I will try to wear these. That's a kind of cute bubblegum pink. That might be kind of fun. I don't know. Remains to be seen. This final MAC is a red. It's Ruby Woo. So it's another iconic classic red. It is a little bit dry, I'm finding now, so I don't know if I can get away with it. I certainly can't wear it more than one night in a row because it's so dry. So I will keep that for now. And this is a Chanel red that my mom brought me last year. So this one is fairly new. And it's also a classic. And I just need to wear this and see how I feel about it. So it's a little taste of luxury, I guess the Chanel logo and all that. I didn't buy it for myself, but it was a lovely gift and I'm going to keep it. Okay, we're at the final stretch now, just the tools of which I'm just gonna keep because I don't have very many and these are just all for the eyes, for like using shadow as liner, for blending both of these. I use my fingers most of the time now, but it's just good to have some brushes. I have one more brush in this naked palette, so I'm gonna take that out. Now, these palettes are a point of contention. So the Naked palette here was another influence purchase, but I'm not really ashamed of it because I didn't have an eyeshadow palette at the time. And even now, I don't really have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. It's got a good range of classic shades. You know, a little bit of pinky neutrals and browns, a little bit of black and gray, dark gray, a little bit of brown mattes. But I think this has to be over 10 years old at this point. I don't even think you can buy this new. And I shudder to think of what kind of microorganisms might be growing on this at this point. And I also think the color payoff isn't that great anymore. So like when I try to transfer it to my arm, it kind of immediately wipes away in the lighter colors. And then if I take a darker color, it's really kind of washed out. And I do have that YSL quad palette on my wish list, and it would have like a color like this, maybe one of these kind of lighter colors and some of the mid-tones. And then I do also have these Lisa Eldridge palettes that are fairly new. I think I got them last year for Christmas. So I have Myth and Sorcery. So Myth is like the purpley based one. And again, trying to get a swatch here with cleaner fingers, it's not the highest color payoff either, but they can be built up. Some of the colors have better payoff than others. Like I actually think this red, this purpley red, has quite a good color payoff for what it is. It's right there. And um, maybe the eggplant purple has a good payoff as well. The taupe is a classic and it's got that kind of light shade similar to this virgin or sin on the naked palette. And then Sorcery has all these kind of harder hitting sparkly shades that I really enjoy wearing. I enjoy wearing just like one of these shades all over the lid and blending with my finger. And this is my most worn eyeshadow palette by far. And this as well is an eyeshadow uh, cream 
kind of shimmer stick. It's kind of similar to the e.l.f. ones that I've decluttered as far as how easy it is to use. This one is much more shimmery and it's in the color Bianca. It's a pink, kind of like a champagne. I used to have some of those Maybelline color tattoo eyeshadow pots. I had one in pink, shimmery, and it was my most worn eye makeup. So that's why I got this one. I really like it. I might purchase more of these after my no buy is over, depending on how things are going in my makeup drawer. So these are for sure keepers. This Lila B, again, covers some of the mid ranges of this Naked palette, actually. Looking at it now, we have a very similar shade to Buck right there. And I don't know, this kind of taupey shade range. And again, one of the more pinky shades here in a slightly better <laughs> color payoff, I think. I could definitely see that one better. Um, so I think it is the end of an era here and that my Naked palette needs to go. I'm kind of sad actually. That was like one of the first pieces of serious makeup that I ever purchased. Okay, and then this is just a single of the Fired Earth Seamless Matte from Lisa Eldridge. I just didn't want to not have this, but I didn't want to buy, I think it was the Cinnabar palette that this one came in. I'm running out of fingers to swatch with now, but it's a really dark brown. So like for a more dramatic smoky eye, this is what I would use. I could probably get rid of one of these shades that doesn't have great payoff in the Myth palette. Maybe that taupe one. I'm not actually sure how this one, it's like almost no color payoff from this one. So maybe I should pop this one out. They've got little pinholes in the back where you can pop it out and maybe I could put that brown one in here. That might be a good idea. So that's on the to-do list is to swap out this mauve decade. Maybe these velvets are not the greatest color payoff. But uh, either way, the Fired Earth is a good color payoff, seamless matte format. And I think I need to swap out one of these for this. So that'll go on the to-do list. And I keep my eyeshadows in the Lisa Eldridge pouch. They're Lisa Eldridge products, so kind of makes sense that way as well. Those are my eyeshadows. And then I have more room in here for perhaps some of the face products as well. I was keeping these highlighter sticks in here. Blush helps me keep my makeup drawer a little more organized. And then we'll keep the powders out, keep the brush on top. I know this looks like it's difficult to navigate, but because the eyeshadows are in palettes, it's easy to kind of pull out what I need. And if I'm wearing eyeshadow, it's probably not a normal day and I have a little more time to navigate through this anyway. So it works for me, people. It works for me. All right, so we have these ready to go back in my drawer. We have the lip products that are for sure keepers that go in my drawer. It kind of looks like this where they're in the front portion of the drawer. We have my brushes and backup products. And I actually have a different bag that these go into in my makeup drawer. We have my counter skincare and counter makeup. This will go in the drawer as well. So it'll be maybe on the other side of this in the drawer to keep it somewhat organized. The backup cleansing products we can put in a drawer as well when we get upstairs. I'm just gonna put them back in here so I can carry them more easily. Maybe we'll even do this now. These are just gonna go back in the drawer. Okay, and then these are the backups. And then these are the use it or lose it category. It's <laughs> all of this stuff. So in theory, I could just not have all of this and I would be fine. I would be fine with just this as my makeup collection. And of course, my beloved glosses that kind of live all over the place because I use them everywhere and anywhere. So, you know, this is kind of what I would say that I need to have. These are my extra products that are kind of possible purchasing mistakes, but we'll see if some of these make it back to this pile. And then these are the other products to use up and not repurchase or possibly even declutter if I don't find the use value in them. Finally, for the products that I did actually declutter, it's not a lot by any means, 
but for the size of my collection, it was a sizable amount, I would say. So we have nine products here. I'm sorry I didn't count the total of my products, but maybe I can do a screen grab of when I laid out my whole collection and do a count here so we can see what percentage nine of my products is as far as decluttering. It feels like this is fairly substantial though because there's a lot of eyeshadows in there and it's a large product. This is also a larger product, very old. These ones are so old that they have to go in the trash and then this one I will <laughs> wait and see if anybody has a good idea to repurpose before I get rid of it for good. All right, I think that is everything. That is my whole makeup collection. I am going to do my flat surfaces tidy while my makeup is out of my drawer. So I will rearrange this on my counter based on the usability of my products and the rest of my counter setup. So that will be coming out probably in the next couple of weeks. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you like makeup, hopefully it was enjoyable. Even though I'm not a beauty guru, I'm just a regular person who typically does just minimal makeup every day, sometimes has concert makeup for performances, and oftentimes wears no makeup if I'm not going anywhere. So I will come to say goodbye to you. Uh, hopefully you learned something from my purchasing mistakes or it was enjoyable to watch at the very least. Um, bye for now, I will see you in the next one. Oh my goodness, this product snuck out. I guess it fell into my lap and I didn't realize. This is the NARS, I think it's in Cruella. I'm gonna do one final swatch for posterity. Next to these reds, oh gosh, and I just broke it. You know what? I think it's a sign. Not only does it look very similar to these, it also just broke, so. That's a declutter as well.